Like I had to apply for the first time when I was 14 for an internship. I was asked to add the religion I had that was important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was asked to add the job of my parents. That was a standard thing at the time that you write down what is the position your parents have. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. The following conversation is with Ferdi, or better known as the Traveling Prince. He decided to follow his dreams and the love of his life, to move from his native Germany, where he was all set, to move to Taiwan with zero contacts beside his wife. In the process of settling down in Taiwan, he started his own YouTube channel, The Traveling Kunz, where he will document all his upgoings while traveling in Taiwan and Asia, and at the same time, he starts applying for jobs. If you're interested in following your dreams and moving to a new country and start from zero, please stay till the end of this video, because Ferdi is someone just like you, that one day, having everything going well in his life, decided to follow his wife and move to a new country. Today, Freddy will tell us his story, all his up and downs, and what took him to settle down in a new country, and how did he find a job while traveling around Asia. Thank you for being here. And now, how many applications you did in Taiwan? I think now it's more than 300 for here 300. in Taiwan, right? How many acceptances But... you got? Oh, it's low. I think it's mostly no answer at all. Yeah. Um, let's, let's really reframe this. What's happening today is, right? Today, especially here in Taiwan, it is only quick apply, so... He first starts explaining us how technology, while making it accessible to anyone to apply for a job, has made it hard for companies to find good candidates. The first thing you have to sort of understand is an inflation of applications, right? Yeah. Because as an applicant, of course, I look. something looks interesting, You can't read that much. I will not be able to read 300 application texts. You just quick apply. And I really try to sort of prepare well or so. And of course, for the companies, the same issue. You apply for jobs you maybe didn't read really or didn't qualify. Yeah. Companies have to filter somehow. So of course, 90% there's no answer. From all the pitfalls and shortcomings that Fred faced, he came up with a few recommendations for recruiters to make this process better. Is that companies should adjust and think about how we handle this, right? There should be at least a short survey. I would say like five questions. Before I hit that quick apply, five, uh, quick apply button, there should be five multiple choice questions. Like, are you sure you have these five skills, right? This is a job, here's the location, Here is what you have to do, a very quick summary, just to make sure I, as an applicant, have a basic understanding what I'm applying for. Yeah. Um, there is that option. Some companies use that option, right? Okay. They say, you do understand this is not a home office job, for instance. You understand that you have to move to city X to work here. Um, just like very superficial questions, okay. but I think that will already filter at least 50%. After going through so many applications, Ferdi described the roller coaster of emotions that he felt during this process. How do you feel when you send this? What, 300 applications you send? 300 clicks, right? Yeah. Honestly, at the beginning, I was very excited. Like, even the smallest mid sized company or a one person freak show mm -hmm. startup mm -hmm. can have a very professional experience, a uh, uh, presence. And that is, that is cool. I think that is. It made me at the beginning very excited, so okay. One of the things people want to understand when they move to a different country is the cultural differences. In this case, Ferdi start facing specific challenges that were different of how things were done in his native Germany compared to now in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. um, what I didn't prepare, what is a big thing over here is uh, references. Mm -hmm. um, not that they really check, but It is, in Germany, it's sort of illegal, actually, if you contact your former uh, employer. Over here, it's a very standardized thing. I'm very... This whole mechanical process take a toll on the applicants and people. In this case, Ferdi started dealing with specific emotional challenges that he was not expecting. And I think something that is important is that no one should take this personally because any applicant, regardless of how good you are, will face these challenges. And something else important is that not all recruiters or not all companies are the same. 
And there are some companies that they don't have the best in mind for recruiting people. From the very depressing part, and I think everybody has to just, just go through this very depressing part, just by the fact that job market, the online application is so inflated, so blown up. Many companies don't have the mechanisms. Like I said, this, this short call, some companies do this short calls, mm -hmm. which is really good. I would say an answer rate of 5%, mm -hmm. and those are mostly no's. However, at some point, the first interview requests come in. There are some black sheep, obviously, yeah. who try to take advantage, who pretty much want to work you for free or so. Well, Last how, those we help how so? How so? In the interview? Uh, no, before the interview. That is like something, first advice, if they ask you, it's like, oh, we saw you, we saw your application, can you answer these questions? And then they start with one or two basic questions, but two or three companies sent me then, oh, how would you market this? Can you write a PR strategy or so? Yeah. Like they pretty much wanted to do active work, not, and it's very obvious they want to use that. It is not for the sake of testing, right? Mm -hmm. I do get as a company sort of, hey, write me a test press release, write me a test blog. I did that for a couple of companies. I actually wrote a couple of really full PR briefs, but after the interview, and I also ask, can I write a press release on site? Can I come to your office? And it's, a, it's not a home office job, right? Mm. Home office is very uncommon over here. How about I do this task in your office and we pretend like, oh, it's a normal working day. And I think a legit employer will agree to that. He said, hey, if you come, sure. Or, or maybe has a good reason not to do it. But most of them, some of them didn't even answer. Like you can see... They, they just sort of try to scam people. That is, that is a very small minority, right? There is company who sort of mm -hmm. have a very chaotic and unstructured process. I think they overloaded the application. Some really sort of try to leverage that for uh, abusing mm -hmm. uh, applicants. That's a very small minority. I think most just don't answer, but then actually some are really trying to hire you, right? And while this is important, many people will disregard how complicated it is to find a job in a new place. It's hard to find a job in your own country. Now, moving to a different place with different language and cultural, it is complicated. And he described different emotional stages that he went through this application and what should anyone should expect from this process. But then, yeah, we like in the stage three now. So we have the excitement, the long, depressing time. And then slowly you get this incredible dynamics, actually, because suddenly you have two or three options and suddenly they all sound really good, right? Um, and you have to make the decision. And as complicated as it is, finding a job is not the end of the road. There are still many challenges ahead of starting a new job. And not everything is as good as one think. So I signed with a company. Achieved, yay, sounds super good. And then I decided after one week to quit. <laughs> oh, well, yes. Well, so. um, that is then I think the next level is like, yeah. yeah, you realize stage four is the job doesn't save you. I hope for everyone that a, they master the first three or four, uh, three stages and they find a job and they get through the application process and find some fulfillment. But the problem for me is it turned out I will never be able to do PR in that role. Um, the whole way content marketing is supposed to work yeah. was very different. So between the, the marketing director and myself, mm -hmm. it totally didn't work out, right? He suggests to everyone not to take any decision as final. And recruiters and company, they are people too. So they understand what are the different challenges and processes that a normal individual is going through while applying for jobs. So don't discard all your options so easily, but rather think that people are willing to change if one come with the right approach. Um, two weeks later, I, I was continued applying again. The yeah. good thing is I could come back to another company. So I'm lucky because I had this structured application process and one company I applied for, I was also in the interview stage with them and I said no because I wanted to go with the other company. But, but they told you, me... Oh, 
just before you go into these new companies in the old company so for you the big difference yeah. was that you had an experience yeah. so the, the company HR. i originally refused their offer but they told me okay we understand that you go to a different company we had a phone call about it right yeah and i wrote an email said sorry i went to my first employer first choice um for reasons they said we understand you can contact us anytime it doesn't work out and bam after one week it didn't work out at all so i contacted them again i explained the situation they've yeah. been totally cool about it they said hey ferdinand you have to go through the application process again right there is a certain like a background check or so and that happened so after two weeks or two or three weeks in my job that i had or so yeah. i told my supervisor i'm not gonna stay here very long that- no matter what you do and even though you think you do everything right there's always a big unknown for when you start a new job now is my sixth or seventh week here in taipei and tomorrow i'm gonna start a new adventure in a new company okay i mean at and least i have the... no idea where it's going yeah after going through all this process ferdy reminded us of an experience he had during university of some suggestions that was recommended by a professor that maybe everyone here could apply there was an american professor and he had he, he said something that is very true He said, no matter if you're happy with your job or not, you should at least apply for jobs every year, have at least one or two interviews every year. Mm-hmm. Not because you want to change, but you stay in shape, first of all, right? You, yeah. Because many companies, many people spend 20 years in one company and then they, they can't apply anymore. Over here, I have a language exchange and she wants to become a pilot and she's very smart. Uh, she's working as a teacher and working on this career change. Her English is really good, actually, but her issue is more uh, what I see is this whole interview situation. Like I, I had over 20 jobs for my whole life, right? During studying or before studying. He tells us clearly that the first step, even though before you even start applying, you really need to be in peace with yourself on what you want to do and what you don't want to do and what do you think will be the best. For you, there's more aspects besides just job, the company, and money. But there are other things that are very important when decided, when deciding which job to take. So of course, we all want to be, we all want to see us as serious, and we all want to make, yeah, want to leave a good impression. Yeah. But I think, um, as a, as a recruiter. But also me as an applicant, you have to think or you have to be honest to yourself what you want to do, right? Maybe some people said, oh, I want to see the world. I want to travel a lot to a lot of expositions. Other people say, no, man, I, I want to be, for me, it's important to start at nine and be home by six o'clock. Also, what, what kind of type are you? One last recommendation he give us is that you should, as for example, in dating, you have this dating process where you go and many dates before you actually become a let's say, long-term relationship, is that you want to really get to know the other person. The same thing should happen in the job. Before you decide that you're going to stay for very long, which usually companies are actually checking that on you as well, you should really think, okay, is that for me? Is that something I would like to do for the next, I don't know, months, years, whatever are your plans, but you really need to be sure about this and take your time to, you know, get experience and get to see what's the reality of the occasion. And I also, before I sign a contract or so, I want to spend a fair share amount of time in my future working environment, right? Just to see how people sort of treat each other, how people work together or so. Um, and my learning from my last job is I should have drilled more into my supervisor, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, maybe get a bit blinded by HR. Like HR seems so professional, so sort of things. And then, yeah, like uh, there is more nuances sort of to sort of say. Yeah, I understand. If you like this video, you can go and start following him. What's your name um, on your channel? Traveling Kunz, man, K-U-N-Z. I'll leave it in the comments below. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> and If you like this type of talks, something different in this channel, we're trying to give a little bit of variance here. 
please subscribe please like this video and just comment what do you think what is your experiences when applying for jobs have you ever moved to a different country what was your own feelings and emotions and any suggestions you can do to anyone going to this process right now thinking about moving to a different country or already moved to a different country looking for jobs what are your main suggestions because even though the cultural difference in each country there are many things we can learn together and make the process even better. Thank you very much for watching.